be advised there are spoilers ahead related to the property being watched and or discussed. Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If it's your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is where I like to watch, react, and share my two cents, my two cents, about a couple of properties related to sci-fi and fantasy. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my condensed reaction to episode 15 from the first season of Fringe. This one is titled Inner Child. Now, considering in episode 14, which I think is a game-changing episode, <laughs> like on so many fronts, um, considering that Olivia has manifested an ability that I think few people have on Earth, <laughs> uh, I can only presume perhaps that we're going to dive into her backstory about when she was being experimented on as a child, or it could be completely different, because I, I have to always remember that Fringe will have, like, a side story within a story, so maybe not. All right. Scratch that out. <laughs> Here's my reaction to episode 15. Don't pick around. Okay, people, building screen. Wrap it up and get out. Open demolition in three minutes. Ooh, what's gonna happen in this one? Okay, they're demolishing a building. He's not. Well, son, I got a weird feeling. Yeah? Me too. Mine's Carl. I don't want to die looking at Dad as come on, man. Hey, radio mic, will you? Tell him I want to do another sweep. Come on, man. Where you going? Okay, well, it's obviously going to lead to something. You hear that? What? Sounds hollow. This place has been completely prepped. There's nothing underneath there. It's a solid foundation. Interesting timing that he would have this feeling. The, the concrete's cracked. Man. Obviously not. <sighs> Mike, I think you should come down here. This was definitely not in the blueprints. <laughs> it's Batman's lair. Bracing myself for a jump scare. I'm really sensitive to those. What the hell? My God. Some kind of creature? Oh! No, a child. Feral child looking. I was gonna say golem. <laughs> But he's not that, you know, far gone in his looks. Poor kid. Oh, hey. Actually, I just had an old case reopened and I... It can wait. <laughs> can it? The place was a subconscious. The only living things down there were rats, insects, and him. And we have no idea how he got down there. Well, we knew, at least know what he was likely eating. Does he have a name? He hasn't spoken a word since he was found. Dr. Bishop, any thoughts? Can he even talk? First, I need a piece of special equipment. My turntable. Was that some kind of lab equipment? No, no, a turntable. Record player. Oh, right. You enjoy music, don't you, Mr. Broyles? Well, imagine the agony of having an extensive record collection and having no means to. The agony. I'll have someone get right on that. <laughs> I hope they don't play too much copyright music. Look, I understand your agency's taken an interest in this child, but he's been through quite a trauma. Is he sick? Not as far as we can tell, but he's having difficulty breathing. We need to administer oxygen. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. The child was trapped in a low oxygen environment for so long that his body adapted to it. And that is why he's having trouble breathing. I don't think so. We need to deprive him of oxygen. Get him a nasal cannula and a tank with low oxygen content. Perhaps 5% to start. Oh, 
Well, they showed Ella. So I could see them using Ella maybe to try to connect with him. Excuse me? Your tattoo. The body of a lion, the head of an eagle. That's a griffin, right? Just picked it out of the sample book. Glad it looks cool. Oh, well. Nice choice. <laughs> Did it hurt much? I always imagine getting a tattoo would hurt real bad. Go get one, you'll find out. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. You didn't. Again. Don't start feeling pity. Ah. Sorry, I don't I don't mean to be insensitive in that sense. It's just like sometimes it annoys me when people's judgment changes based on things like that. Hey. Do you need a hand? Uh, thanks, I got it. Um, actually, you know, um, a little help would be great. Cool motorcycle, what make? 67 Harley Shovelhead. She's a beauty. Yeah, she is. Okay, not to say everyone in a wheelchair would ever do that, but... Ah... Uh. You manipulated her sensitivities, or sensibilities, or whatever you want to call it. Any minute now. I have so many it questions. Worked. Like, how old was he when he was in there? So you said that he hasn't talked. How do we know he can hear? He responds to sound, and we examined his tympanic membrane. There's no physical damage. In fact, considering how he was found, he seems fairly healthy. His heart sounds fine. His blood pressure's strong. And how do we think he survived down there? I mean, what did he eat? Rats. I think. Moss, insects, high in protein, tastier than you may think, especially millipedes. <laughs> Does he even understand what they're all saying? If they have this kid speak in perfect English, uh, well, they better give a good reason for it. Hi, I'm uh, still in the hospital. Unless he's only been down there for a short period of time. Okay, well, he obviously seems to understand what's what. He can read. Uh, you read it backwards, or? What's it say? Sam Gilmore. He can write. And he didn't even uh, look at the page while he was writing. Like Baldy. Oh my god. No. I'm wondering if it's like Baldy's son or something. <laughs> Here's what we have so far. She's a local girl, a process server from West End. Next of kin is being notified by local agents as we speak. Oh my gosh. Samantha Gilmore. Wait, did you say Sam Gilmore? Yeah, Samantha Gilmore. You know her? Psychic child. Our perp's oh name is the artist. As some of you here may recall that we had our first encounter with him three years ago. He killed four women in Lowell, Jamaica Plain, over a period of two days. His MO is to kidnap, sedate, and kill his victims. And after he kills them, using surgical tools and chemicals, he, in his mind, enhances their appearance. Crazy stuff. So let me ask you the obvious. What's the connection? 
Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Three has to keep my meal at home. A wild girl of champagne. They're all feral children who, who grew up completely isolated from human contact, surviving, like our boy, uh, for many years alone. Yeah, but I'm guessing none of them could ride upside down. And they didn't turn out like Tarzan. You said that that place had been sealed off for decades. The boy couldn't be more than ten. Well, he certainly looks that. You believe he might be on? Well, given the environmental conditions, the lack of oxygen, uh, mm, light, yeah. and their impact Stunted on growth. biological development, he could be significantly older. We just got another one. The artist is going after another victim. Hmm. I've got all kinds of ideas. Thank you. Be friendly? Of course. His name is Matt. Hey, Hey, Mac. Hey, Mac. <laughs> Dog, I hope you can sense danger. They told me that you haven't eaten anything solid yet. So, uh... I wouldn't start with candies. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to live on these. Except the yellow. Something about the color reminded me of medicine. You want to try one? I hope it doesn't make him sick. That's it. Good. <laughs> Kid's like, yeah, you can get the cavities. Thank you. It's like he's reading her. It's interesting. I thought today you could give me your name. You ever be away with Elliot Michaels, Department of Social Services? Mm. Olivia Dunham, FBI. Here comes the realism of things with a child found. Dr. Winnick called me up to speak about your interest in the boy's case. But the circumstances by which he was found attracted our interest. It's bizarre, huh? He can read lips or something. He knows what they're saying. Physically, it doesn't seem as if there's anything really wrong with him, so I've arranged to have him move oh he's staring at them. to a facility that can provide the treatment he needs. Creepy. When? Tomorrow. You know, I hope, you know, assuming all the paperwork is in order. Mm, he doesn't want that. Should maybe bring him to the lab? I think we may have found another one. Ugh. Is anyone who they seem to be in the show? Another experiment. Oh, her, her street. Anything so far? I just got here five seconds ago. Oh no, that's not her so street. What's the plan? Thinking of that episode. Not knocking on doors. Unless you can think of a better idea. All right. You go east. I take west. The lady with the dog. this kid is tuning into it happens to be this series of uh, serial killing with this guy want to know the connection did I miss you last night or did you not even come home uh no you didn't miss me do you like it your job yeah most days today not so much Follow the lead that didn't pan out. I'm sorry. Mm. Hello. We found our second victim. It's Kate Harper. The good news is, we might have finally caught a break. ERT said they found some blood underneath her nails. So they're running it. Okay. I'll be ready. There's one more thing left. 
A little while after we left, a neighbor found a dog tied to a fence. It was whimpering. It was a kingdom's dog. We were there. No way we could have found her. Oh, she's gonna blame herself. Trying to tell us, and he was right, and we were there. Damn. Walter, it turns out that the boy was right. He gave me a clue, but I didn't know what I was looking for. I, I believe I know how he's doing it. Since he's been living underground for so long, his hypersensitivity to light and sound, it's just possible he may also be sensitive to people's emotions. So are you saying that he's psychic? No, no, more a shark. A shark, specifically a their electromagnetic field, which allows them to detect their prey's bioelectric field from a distance of many miles. But how would he know things that I don't? Know about the killer or victims that he's never even met? My dear, there is much that is unexplained. Until it is. In <laughs> short, he has no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, the boy is obviously thinking, yes? Having thoughts. Mm -hmm. We just haven't been able to hear them. And I'm sure you can do that, can't you? He has some kind of contraption? Perhaps I can. I want to see a new invention here. <laughs> Walter. He'll have to go to the lab and all that. What did you make that? Creative. It's an arrow. Was it pointing to somewhere specific in the room there? Listen, I want to take you away from here for a while. Is that okay? She just took that as a yes, I guess. Vintage Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Didn't get any better than this, right? Well, <laughs> Tiny Tunes. Neural stimulator. Is there anything it can't do? Walter, is that what you're gonna use to read the boy's thoughts? Not to read them. Dear, to listen to them. Yes! Walter, the last time you used that thing, you drilled it into the guy's head. Oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. That is disagreeable. Whoops. Suppose it could be modified? Really? You didn't think to mention that to the last guy? It shouldn't be too much trouble. Think of it as creating artificial vocal cords. Simple, like making an omelet. Depends on the omelet. Just remember that you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. If for a second you're scared, or you don't like what's happening, you just squeeze my hand like that. Walter, what are you doing? What you learn? Oh! Oh my goodness. Nice song. Ah, uh, well... There's a series of sequence of scenes I can't play on YouTube. <laughs> oh, well. Well, I'll have to play it in silence anyway. Oh, he's smiling. Okay, he can sense bad thoughts. Did you really think you could just steal a child out of protective custody and that somehow no one would notice? Well, first of all, I didn't steal him. The child's assisting us in an active criminal investigation. Assisting you how? No offense, Mr. Michaels, but that's classified information. The Department of Social Services doesn't have clearance to know that. Hmm. Or does he? Mr. Michaels is in social services. He's with the CIA's Director of Science and Technology. I'd have talked to you earlier myself, but you don't have clearance to know that. <laughs> okay. Clearance wars. I'm afraid this is above both of us. Agent Francis just called. He said we got another invitation from the artist. Mr. Michaels, suppose you give us one day. A day. Yeah. If he can help us catch a murderer and save a life, the boy will be under my protection.
protection of our personal guarantees. If I agree to this, then you'll turn the boy over to me without a fight. Do we have an agreement? I guess it's the words you choose. We do. You know, she didn't say yes. Because he said they found another one, right? Yeah, thanks, Charlie. I will. Keep me posted. More bad news? We got the forensics report. We were hoping that the blood we found under the second victim's fingernails was a match to the killer. But no. Not unless Jean is the killer. It wasn't mm -hmm. human, it was bovine. Did you say cow blood? Yeah, and some plastic polymers. Mm hmm. Maybe it's some kind of farm? A couple years ago, I was working down in Tennessee as a floor sweeper at a meatpacking plant. Sounds awesome. You yeah, have no idea. My point is, we had these big rolls of industrial grade plastic that we used to wrap the cuts of meat in before we would send them to the grocery stores. Cow's blood and plastic. Yeah. Well, thank you, Peter. I believe we're ready. Are we gonna hear a voice from the computer, like an artificial voice that's supposed to signify his thought? Okay, that sounds a little more like a voice. Yes. Now, the sound pressure level, uh, dial the audio meter to 1500 hertz. Look, turn the machine off right now. Turn it off now. He's freezing. Come and get this off. If anything, brain activity should generate heat. We're trying to track down the suspect in a murder investigation. What, you mean the guy in the news who killed those girls? We're not sure. Maybe. A man came in here yesterday, and I, I sold him some plastic. Dum dum dum. The killer. Oh. Mommy. Oh, thank you. Your mother raised you well. Mm-hmm. She taught him how to sew. Hey guys, we got good news. What's that? Turns out the plastic did come from a meatpacking plant. Olivia got a sketch of the guy. What about you? You gonna go back to the FBI or you coming here? Ask if it was refrigerated. Right. Yeah! Peter, he was shivering. the plant was refrigerated. He was shivering along the same time Olivia was. What does that even matter? Because that explains everything. Our strange little friend is an empath. Yes, he senses other people's emotions. You already said that, Walter. He's an eye. But Olivia specifically. Most importantly, he is emotionally bonded to you. Because he knows that the information is important to you. He's trying to help you. That's cool. That's so cool. I'm just wondering what's going to happen to him, though, after this episode. Like, is he going to stay on as somewhat of a surrogate son? Or move on, I guess? That man who's been hurting people is going to hurt someone else unless I stop him. Maybe he doesn't know. We can't control the ability all the time. No. Hmm. It's something different. It's like he's mad at me. Because he doesn't want to leave. What? Well, you told Michaels that once the boy helped you stop the artist, you'd oh, turn him over to him. Right, 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 right. Language here is emotion. Huh. I'm sorry. He's gonna help her because he cares. Oh, that's sad. I'm almost prepared, but I just never know when. It's always, it's these very quieter beats 
they're really good at um, getting the emotion out. Oh, poor kid. I don't want to think too much ahead, but I just, whatever it is, how they conclude it, I just hope it's with, you know, a decent ending with him being safe. Either way, you know, I think any viewer would want that, right? <laughs> okay, let's continue. really cool setting for this considering the kind of crime he does Like what now, girl? I'm doing all I can. Hi. Hi. I think you find he's doing much better. Hi. Oh, thank you. You remember Doctor Winnick? She's going to take you now, but not to a facility. She's going to take you to a home with a very nice family that are going to take. Just like that, huh? Oh. I could see him as a reoccurring character. I'm just wondering how much authority the doctor has over the CIA guy. Like, can the CIA just go and get him anyway? With all the authority they have? I guess that's where Borrell's come in, comes in for a favor. Yeah, yeah, okay, there we are. That's what we can't figure out. He disappeared from right under the noses of a protective detail. How's that possible? He's just a kid. Yes. A kid who, as you said yourself, lived his entire life underground, which still begs the question how he got there in the first place. believable it is that they could hide him from that guy. Hmm. Are they going to show the family that he... Oh, okay. His face just went all... Oh my gosh. I was really joking about the whole connection, but I guess... There is something there? Ah! Is he like a child version of, <laughs> of whatever the observer is? Oh my god. Okay, by the way, it's official. Aliens is off the table. Okay, 
I've been schooled on that, so I won't be touching on that. All right. Won't get into it. Don't write about it in the comments. You know, spoilers. It. It's done. It is what it is. I won't be going on the alien route of things. Okay. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting how th certain things are just right on the nose, but because it's so obvious, I'm not really thinking they would make it that obvious, right? Him being this pasty white bald kid looking like the observer kind of, you know, just a younger version. And then now it's possible that they, there's a connection there. Now believing that the observer is human. Gosh, all right. Oh, the speculation, the speculation. I'm so jealous of those of you that watched this when it first, when it was out on TV and you had to wait each week. I can imagine blog posts and uh, forums. <laughs> you guys went nuts with uh, your speculations and ideas with this show. I love it. I love it. Okay. Alrighty, I'm going to pick out a scene that stands out as per the usual. So thoughts coming up. Well, I'm happy to say that I've been able to kill two birds with one stone with this episode. <laughs> it's made my uh, scene hunting a lot easier. All right, so what I mean by that is, number one, I know where to find the observer. <laughs> he was easy to spot. However, um, because I'm recording this before my edit, I don't know if he's in other clips of the episode or just that last scene. I'll find out soon enough, and I'm sure I'll put something there at the bottom of the screen to confirm or deny or whatever. All right, so yes, the Observer at the end is also part of my main scene that I take away from this episode that adds to the pool of mystery because it just opened up a whole can of like, oh my gosh, could this boy be related to the Observer? Now, as I said towards the end of my reaction, alien theories are out the window. I won't be touching on them. So now assuming and believing that the observer is a human being is he a grown-up version of this kid like are they both the same and then the observer represents a, a version of this boy that that has grown up oh boy now it lends to more ideas and thoughts and questions because according to walter this kid could be much older than what they think right and the environment that he was left in stunted perhaps his physical growth <sighs> or is it just because he's bald and pale it's maybe a misdirect don't confirm or deny that please but i'm just saying i'm wondering these things and so it is definitely the scene that i take away from this episode and looking back at the observer and the way he kind of just turned around like it was nothing he sensed the boy he looked at him and then he just turned around it makes me wonder then if if there are multiple versions of a child like this, because according to the CIA agent, he had said on the phone that they found another one. So how many of these kind of observer looking like <laughs> boys and girls? Is it just males? Oh my goodness. Forgive me, I just I have my thoughts going all over the place. But yeah, this is one of those episodes that's at the top of my list to rewatch, but I'm gonna rewatch them in order. I'm gonna rewatch them in order. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't have much more else to say without going on a tangent. Uh, and I'm almost at the end of the season and I gotta look over the ideograms and also review some of the lines, key lines, and key moments and see if I can kind of connect the dots. In any case, this episode gets five Ash emojis. Yes, yes, yes. It's so good. And I'm like distracted in thought right now as I'm trying to record somewhat of an afterthought for you. I see that as a sign of a really good show when it gets you thinking like this. As long as I'm entertained this way <laughs> and it gets, you know, this pea brain to be thinking on different levels than normal, 
I, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm a happy viewer with that. And that's mainly why I chose Fringe because it's been so highly praised and I haven't received any comments from club members or viewers here on YouTube that indicate that this show ends up becoming bad later on. If anything, I have noted that apparently the show goes in directions that perhaps may seem a little jarring to some viewers, but I guess I'll have to wait till I watch it and be the judge of it for myself. Alrighty, alrighty, so there you have it. That is my reaction to episode 15 of the first season of Fringe. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to reading your non-spoiler comments. And if you want access to my full reaction to this episode, early access, details about that is in the description box below, as well as details on how you can support this channel if you're not interested in being a club member, but you do want to help me grow on YouTube. I would really appreciate that. So until my reaction to episode 16, I'm Asha, tuning out. Peace. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos.